everyone's favorite subject is himself. So there may be no better way to learn about science than making it personal. This is especially true of genetics. Genetic testing is fast becoming cheaper, more informative, and certainly more popular. With just a simple cheek swab or saliva sample, companies such as 23andMe, DecodeMe, and Navigenics can give you information about health risks, physical traits, and ancestry. Of course, information gleaned from genetic tests can be surprising, even disturbing to some people, so it's important to consider such risks before getting tested. It is also important to remember that what people learn can have psychological, not just physical or health consequences, especially when it comes to unanticipated disclosures such as non-paternity or unexpected genetic ancestry results. On the other hand, such revelations can often help unravel family mysteries or simply address long-held curiosities. For example, my parents and I sent our saliva to a popular direct-to-consumer company called 23andMe that uses over 600,000 genetic markers. Our maternal and paternal haplogroup designations have led to some fascinating puzzles about who some of our ancestors were. A maternal or mitochondrial haplogroup is matrilineal, passed from mother to children of either sex, but only daughters can pass it on to their children. Because mitochondrial DNA does not undergo recombination, it can be analyzed as an evolutionary lineage. Among humans, the earliest branches of the mitochondrial tree are exclusive to contemporary African populations, clear evidence of our species' origins in Africa. Genetic testing has revealed that my mother's and my mitochondrial haplogroup is K1A1, a subclade of K, and that haplogroup K is found at high frequencies, around 32%, among Ashkenazi Jews. My father's is J2B, a subclade of J, and also may have Ashkenazi ties. But more striking was what we learned about my father's paternal line. Ancestry is also traced from father to son via the Y chromosome. Like mitochondria, the Y chromosome does not undergo recombination, and therefore Y chromosomal haplogroups can be analyzed as evolutionary lineages. My father's Y DNA haplogroup is E1A1, a subclade of E. For a man of European ancestry, this is an intriguing result as the E haplogroup is much more common in Africa, reaching frequencies close to 100% in some areas. In fact, E1A and E2 are found almost exclusively in Africa. We have since learned of a few likely scenarios explaining the presence of E1A and E1A1 in European American men with no known African ancestry. One obvious possibility is that the man's paternal ancestor his father's father's father, etc., was an enslaved African, or free person of color, while most of his other ancestors were European. E1A1 may also have a Semitic tie, that is, the man's paternal relative might have been an Ashkenazi Jew. So, to dig deeper, our next step was to test my father's Y chromosome with a genetic genealogy company, Family Tree DNA. This company uses genetic markers called short tandem repeats, STRs, which evolve by mutation much faster than single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, used in the 23andMe test. In this way, the family tree DNA test gave my father the closest Y chromosome matches to other men across the world. Since his matches were almost exclusively Ashkenazi men, we can conclude that the most likely explanation is that our paternal ancestors were Jewish, and somewhere along the way, a great-great-grandfather or someone close to him chose to hide the family history. So while my mother may have Ashkenazi ties on her maternal side, it seems quite definitive that my father has Ashkenazi ties on his paternal side. Another test we used was the EuroDNA Calc 1.1.1. Interestingly, this test was developed by genetic genealogical enthusiasts and uses the raw SNP data generated by 23andMe to estimate Ashkenazi ancestry specifically. According to this test, my father's estimate is near 50%, my mother's around 10%, with me somewhere in the middle. Still, it is important to remember that no test is perfect and estimates are just that. In our case, they merely point us in a likely direction. 
My parents and I have embraced the possibility of a Jewish heritage we are only starting to uncover. My father especially was able to explore a suspicion he had held since he was a teenager growing up in the Chicago suburbs, that his father's side of the family was Jewish, and that somewhere along the way, his ancestors had lost their Jewish roots. For people with a healthy curiosity and a willingness to discover the unexpected, genetic testing can provide answers, and at times, it can suggest new questions. Thanks to an ever-improving technology, my family and I will continue to probe our genes for the secrets of our ancestors. You've been Reading Between the Genes with Katrina Voss.